Hello everybody, West Boss here. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I just wanted to make a, a little kind of informal video. This isn't going to be as polished as some of my other stuff, but I just want to show you kind of what this all new React context is all about. So in React 16.3, we're getting this new thing called context, which we already have had something called context, but this is going to allow us to actually use context in another way. And it's sort of something that will come along with uh, using state and props, and it's going to solve a problem that all of us have in building React applications. Um, and it's something that maybe we we reach for something like Redux maybe a little bit too soon. So I'm going to show you uh, how why this is useful, what problem it solves, um, and how to actually implement it into your application. So what I did here is I just got a basic create React app up and running. So the way, what I did is I just typed create React app dot and that went ahead and installed it. Then I opened up my package.json and you can see that I'm running uh, alpha one of React 16.3 and that's because that has the newest version of this context API in it and, and same with uh, the React DOM. So if you want to install those, you just npm install React at next and React DOM at next and that's going to allow us to install the alpha versions of that. Then I opened up my app.js and I simply just import React. I create a component here and then I export that application here. So now that we're up and running, let's take a look at sort of what the problem is that we, we often have. So let's say this app here has some state and in that state, let's say we have a name and the name is Wes and the age is 100 and the cool is true. Now let's make another component. So let's say class person extends component. And I'm going to actually move this above here just because I'm going to use that first. And that needs a render method. Uh, inside of that, I'll give myself a div with a class of person. So we'll return that. And inside of that, I'll just say, hey, I'm a person. Good. Now, if I want to go ahead and use this person tag in here, that's fine. I'd say person. And it should render out just fine. And you see that our person tag is, is up and running. If we open up our React Dev Tools, let me bump up the font size on this real quick. And we look in there, we have our app and we have our person tag. Now, the question is like, what if you want to get data from our app into our person tag? Well, uh, how does data get anywhere from state or from anywhere else? It's via props. So you might do something uh, like this, like the name is equal to this.state.name. And, and then we can go into here and instead of hard coding person, we say this stop props dot name. Now, when I go back to my app that's running here, obviously the data from my app component is being passed down to the person component. Now where that starts to become a problem is when you don't just have this sort of direct parent child relationship between where your data lives and where your data needs to go. But sometimes you have components that sort of live in between there. So let's make a, uh, another component here. We'll just say, uh, const family is equal to, this will be a stateless functional component. And from that, we'll return a div with the class of family. And then inside of that, we'll do a person tag. And, and then down here, instead of rendering out person, I'm going to render out the family tag. So we have our app that renders out our family tag. And then we have our family tag that renders out our person tag, which is finally where it needs to go. Now we have a bit of a problem here because we have app family person and the data lives at app and it needs to get down to person. This is a very simple example. And you can already see the issue here is that I can't directly pass the data from app down to person. So what I would need to do in that case is I need to pass the data to my family component. And then my family component would need to pass the data down again to, I'll uh, say props.name. And then it should make its way from one to another. And uh, Kent C. Dodds has a really good blog post on this and he called it prop drilling, which I love uh, because it, it, sometimes you find yourself just being like playing hot potato with your, your data, your functions or your state or whatever it is. And you're just passing it all down via props. So that's fine if it's one or two or three levels, but what happens when it gets into six or seven levels deep? Well, that's where people start to reach for uh, some sort of data store like Redux, where uh, you can inject your data store. You can you can sort of like keep it outside of your application. Your data store is where all your data lives, and you can inject that data at any level deep. Now, React's Context API is actually going to work very similar to that, where 
we can inject our data at any level that we want. So uh, it requires sort of two different um, pieces. First, we need a provider, uh, and then we need a consumer, and that is both in this new context API. So this is how it's actually going to work. First, what we need to do is say, first, we will make a new context. So say const my context is equal to react.create context. And the is a lowercase on that. So we make a new context. Make sure you spell it right. There we go. Um, and then what we want to do is we need to create what's called a provider component. And that's where your data is actually going to live. So uh, then create a provider component. So class my provider. And from that, we will render out and we have put also put some state in there. And in that state, let's uh, let's move that data that we were talking about, which is the name, age and cool. Uh, we'll move that up to here. So we'll say name. All right, just actually, let me just take the whole thing, move it out of there, going to move it into my provider component. And from the render, we are going to return. And this is not going to be divs or, or anything what it looks like or what the markup actually looks like. But we actually need to return uh, a context provider. So we'll say we'll give ourselves what is our context? Well, it's, it's called my context, my context dot provider. And now we have that tag. Uh, and then inside of that, we say this dot props dot children. And what this is going to do, and very similar to Redux if you've used it, is this is going to live sort of at the top level of your application. And then there's going to be another component that we use to actually access the data. Now, this isn't enough just yet. We need a what's called a value here. And that value can be anything that we want. In our case, let's just say I'm the value. So, so far we aren't able to access the state. That's okay, but we've passed down this value to anything that this uh, provider is wrapped in. Okay, that makes sense. Then what we can do is we can go to our application here and wrap the entire application in that provider. So we'll say my provider, I'll wrap that entire thing. And then any child inside of that provider, it doesn't matter if it's directly there or anywhere down the chain, we're able to access the actual data. So we can quit passing down the data like that. We can just render out a family component. Then let's go back up to our family component. And we can uh, quit caring about passing down the props name here. So we can just render out the person tag. And then let's go down to our person tag. And let's just take the, this dot props out. So the question is going to be, how do I access my data here? My context is not defined. Oh, I goofed it up. Uh, it should be a capital M on this variable here. There we go. So here's the question. We have our app. We have our provider. We have our context. We have our family. And we have our person. Our data lives in the provider, but we need to access it inside of the person. How do I get it down from here all the way down to there? Uh, and then the way that we do that is we create what's called a consumer, right? So the provider is going to be where your data lives, and the consumer is going to be where you actually want to access your data. So all we need to do is to go into our person component, because that's where we want to access our data. And I'm going to remove that paragraph and we can take our context. Remember, context is where we're going to grab our data from. So that we're going to have my context. But instead of doing a dot provider like we did up here, we're going to use a dot consumer. And then inside of that, it's not going to pass it down via props. It's actually going to uh, use something that's called a render prop. And uh, a render prop usually looks a little bit something like this. You either have a uh, property called render and inside of that, uh, you give it, you pass it a function to render, or in this case, the render prop is passed as just a child. So the child of consumer will always, always, always be a function. Uh, so you give yourself a set of curly brackets to tell React that we're running some JavaScript. And then inside of that, you get your value or your context, whatever you like to call it. I like to call it context. 
And back from that, we can start returning something. So we just say here, P, and I'll just say, I'm inside the consumer. So it's rendering out, I'm inside of the consumer. Now the question is, what's in this variable? Well, let's, let's see. I'm inside, I'm the value. So <laughs> let's go through that again real quick. This value is the data that we want to pass down. And uh, that lives inside of our provider. Then uh, a two, three, four levels deep, when you actually want to access that data, then you, you can access it inside of your consumer by wrapping it in a dot consumer tag and then giving the only child of that consumer tag to be a render function. And then inside of here, you can render out anything that you, you normally are used to rendering out. So the question is, how do I change this value not to be I'm the value or if I put a poop in there just for old time's sake, you can see I'm inside the poop. It's passing the value. How do I pass down state? Well, what we can do is instead you can just pass down an object and inside of that object, I like to do this state. And I've only been doing this for a while. And there, there's some libraries that are being developed to sort of live on top of this, but this is, this is just pure react context API state is equal to be this dot state. And then what we can do is go down here and say context dot state dot, and then we can access any of the state that lives in our provider inside of our consumer. So this dot state dot, let's try age. We'll just say age. And we'll do another one for name. This dot state dot name. Uh oh, that's because you can only return one element from this function here. So we could s solve that by wrapping it in a react dot fragment. That's another new uh, react API that will render out sort of just like a blank tag, which is really exciting. Uh, and there we go. Look at age name is being passed down from our provider, which lives here through this div through to family. And then finally from family down to person. And then finally, when we actually render out our person. So we're a couple levels deep being able to access her actual context and the data that lives in it. Now the question is, how do I update that state? Like you have ever, you want to remove it, you want to increment it or do something like that. Well, um, what you can do is much like passing down state here, you can also pass down your functions or your actions as we would call them in Redux. So uh, let's just say uh, grow a year older is equal to an arrow function. And that function is just going to call this dot set state. And we're going to update the age to be equal to, we'll put this on its own line this.state.age dot dot plus one. Okay. Oh, oh, it's because I don't know how to do code. There we go. It's a colon there. Now we have access to this function called grow a year older, and we can go anywhere we want inside of our consumer. We'll put a button there inside of that. We'll have a cake emoji. So there's lots of cake. Fish cake. Is there a birthday cake? Yeah, there we go. And that button on click is going to be equal to this. Oh no, context dot grow a year older. So when someone clicks it, access that method called grow a year older that lives inside of context and it should just update the age. Let's see here. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. You see that still our logic of how to update state and our actual data, which is state, that still lives in the provider, but you can then just magically sort of gr grasp it out of the air at any level deep by just wrapping your code in this little consumer tag that we have. So that's my super simple example of how context works. Hopefully it uh, gives you a little bit of a better idea. I am using it in my own application here. Let me show you this real quick. So I'm working on uh, an application right now that is doing some advanced React stuff. And I am using context specifically. If I go to my local host 3000, 
I am using context specifically to hold things like the current UI state, like this cart. If the cart is currently open, it's either true or false. And I need to know if the cart is open all throughout the application. Obviously in this button, I need to be able to access it. But if I wanted to add one of these items to my cart, and then for some reason I wanted to open it for just a split second, then I would need to be able to access that data. So having the state of the cart being open uh, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to keep that in the cart component when you might need it somewhere else in your application. So my solution to that is I have a context that lives sort of at the top level of my application and then anywhere lower level that I want to access if the card is open or not, I just wrap it in this little consumer tag that we have here and then it, it gives me access to um, both is the cart open as well as the functions that I can use to toggle the cart being open and closed. So hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, let me know. I'm at Westboss on Twitter and uh, I'll see you in the next one.